Okay, guys. Big announcement. Might have done something stupid. Might have done something awesome. I don't know. But, uh... They didn't, uh, they didn't get me bad enough the first time, I guess, so... Uh, oh, sorry. So I bought a second one. So I got the black one this time. And I was going to walk you guys through a couple, uh, a couple of big changes that they made uh, based on my last video. So which is, which is super cool because that's really all I was shooting for. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest ones is that on the last one you had to take this entire beadlock system off in order to be able to remove this tub from out of here. On this one, you only have to remove these three bolts. And you can pull that tub out without risking uh, breaking the bead on your, uh, on your tire. Um, now, I want to make sure everybody knows, too. Um, I bought this unit, and if you are going to buy a Sherp, you have to call Sherp USA in Bemidji, uh, Minnesota. Hope I didn't butcher that pronunciation, but um, in Minnesota, call and talk to Josh. Literally, like, well, the only reason I bought another Sherp was him, for sure, hundred percent. They're they're uh, they're super 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 awesome over there. So if you are gonna buy a Sherp, make sure to call them. They're the largest Sherp dealer in the north uh, northwest. No, they're the largest Sherp dealer in North America. Um, so definitely call and talk to them. Um, not a, not anyway, getting back to the Sherp, not a whole lot of changes on the driver's side, um, over here. Another really cool thing that they started doing. And I think this is just a Sherp USA thing. I don't, uh, it doesn't come from Sherp with this, but Sherp USA flush mounted these lights for us in the side. So we still have our side light. I don't know if you guys remember, but on the last one, they were up on that, um, they were up on like that little angled piece towards the roof. Uh, and just way more susceptible to being ripped off by a tree or whatever. So, um, those are, those are gone now, which is super awesome. Um, fairly minor change. They changed the fuel cap system, which is good. The other one really sucked. So that's nice. Um, Change the tail lights. Same thing, flush mounted the LEDs in back. Um, if you guys remember uh, on my last video, this gate would just fly open whenever. Uh, a lot of that was because of the way that they had the cooling fan designed, it would pressurize the cabin. If you had a fan that was blowing air in rather than sucking air out, um, they've since remedied that. And uh, they put stronger struts in, um, so it's it's uh, it's much more um, secure when going to shut this now. Um, so you actually have to put a little bit of uh, effort into it. Um, on this side, especially for where I'm at, you know, we're in Alaska here, right in the middle of the state. So it gets really cold here. Um, they winterized it so we have a, again i think this was a sherp usa thing and you know, it gets cold in minnesota too so um <clears throat> they winterized it so i got my plug in here and basically all that is is a circulating pump that will heat up the uh heat up the coolant and just run it through the engine um it's not a freeze plug heater or whatever doosan du doesn't really have a we looked into it on the last one and doosan really didn't have a good um, answer for winterizing it, which I thought was kind of odd because they, again, advertised that it was good to 40 below, but you're not going to go out there and cold start it at 40 below. And the Wabasto heater, at least that we had, was terrible. So uh, I wouldn't have relied on that, but that's much more, uh, makes much more sense. Um, another big change that, on my eyes that they made was they uh, did a thermostat on the cooling fan now. So like, I don't know if you guys remember in the last video that I posted, they um, 
we were complaining about why is this fan run all the time? It was it, the engine 60 degrees, you know, I'm pulling it out of my shop and the cooling fans already running full blast. You know, um, it doesn't make any sense. And, um, and it was super loud and everything. So they, they changed that, which I mean, it, that should have never been a thing in the first place. It's pretty, like I said, and I think I said in the last video, like every vehicle, known to man is made that way so you'd think that it would just be like common sense but it wasn't at least in the one that i had so um moving on another cool feature that they added was these mirrors i know it seems stupid because they're probably going to get ripped off but it is nice they automatically collapse when you uh when you get pressure you know when when they hit pressure so if a tree did hit it i'm sure it would um it would just fold in and might not collapse. Um, they changed the windshield wiper. So it's double, it's a double arm now rather than a single arm. Uh, again, pretty minor feature, but it's super awesome because uh, um, the last one just being one arm was, was really terrible. Uh, they beefed up the struts on this as well. Um, so these are these are a lot stiffer, um, which is great. It keeps everything, um, you know, from from rattling around. They fix the weather stripping. Again, I don't know if this was a Sherp thing or if this was a Josh at Sherp USA thing, um, but whatever the case is, m way more sealed uh, than the last one um, that I had. I'm not at all impressed with this. So that's pretty annoying. Um, or this, um, this is it, it almost a downgrade, if you ask me. Um, this ladder thing that they've got going on here, um, super super chintzy. Uh, I mean, like one leg, and you watch the whole you know, like the whole entire thing just sinks down. But, um, you know, the, the door, uh, I guess an argument could be made that, well, when you get in, um, uh, let me get in here and shut, and, uh, shut this all. It just sounds chintzy too. I mean, it is what it is, but, um, I guess an argument could be made that when you get in and you and you shut the door, um, it would potentially keep it from moving, but it doesn't. Uh, you can put your just a really bad locking um, mechanism, or not not locking mechanism, but latching mechanism is all that. Um, another couple features here on the inside. They changed. Um, I don't know if this was a Sherp thing. Uh, it was probably a Sherp USA because those guys are top notch. And so they probably um, was like, hey, we can make this better. Um, but they got rid of the convoluted nightmare that was uh, inflating and deflating your tires. On the last one, you had two switches here, much like that. And you had to like press the one and then press the other one and then, or just press one to deflate it. It was just kind of like, it was, it was stupid is what it was. This new one, uh, you just turn this to deflate and turn this to inflate and then you just rev up the engine. All right. So you, super simple. I mean, it's, again, it's one of those things that it's like the fact that it wasn't like this in the beginning is kind of silly, but trial and error. I get it. Uh, I was super happy to see no permanent marker on any of my uh, on any of my um, labels, which I was really happy about. Um, they added some oh shit handles, which is cool. So I got one there, wasn't on my last one, uh, and I got one there. So that's that's awesome. 
And then Sherp USA offers this, because uh, this thing was terrible about fogging up. Like the defrost that they have on these stock was just terrible. Like how Sherp ships them to you. It, again, it's one of those things that it's like, seriously, guys, you can't do any better than that. Um, so like, for instance, that defrost vent pushes almost zero air. Like it, I think I did it in my last video where I like held something up in front of it, like a piece of string or something. And it was like not even moving. They're pretty much worthless. I actually might turn them into cup holders somehow because they're so garbage, but that's what Sherp gives you right out of the gate. So Josh, um, at Sherp USA was like, Hey, you know what? let's solve this problem by getting some air movement. And so I had him install four of these. So now I've got these fans here that I can position however I want. They're black. I mean, they look a little, I don't know, retro or whatever, but they blend in with the overall um, theme, if you will, of the interior. They're black. They look good. Um, nothing fancy. Uh, they got two speeds. And so I had him put four of them in. I don't know if you can see, there's one in the back corner, one in the back corner over there, and then there's one here. And they're all controlled by this defrost switch. So, and you can set them individually, right? If I want this one on high and that one on medium or whatever, all of them on medium or whatever, you do have to go to the fan and switch it to that. Um, but power comes from here. So it's kind of nice that you can, you know, control it from there, but, um, it'll, it's going to be a huge upgrade come winter time up here when, you know, we're out hunting or whatever we're doing and we need to get rid of the, you know, keep the windows free of fog. And I mean, it was like icing up on the inside. So I get it's humid and, you know, you're breathing and all that stuff. So I get that there's, um, that's going to happen to a certain extent, but uh, if, if they could have figured out the defrost uh, sooner, I don't feel like that would have had to have been uh, put in to, to fix that. Moving on, another super awesome feature that Sherp USA um, is putting in are these 35,000 BTU um, supplement heaters. Uh, that run off of the engine coolant. Now, the only one that was there in these prior to uh, Josh at Sherp USA coming up with these is this one that's right below uh, the driver's seat, in between the driver's and passenger's front seat. This is the only one that was in here. And then you had your Obasto. Well, from prior experience, I can tell you that that was not enough to keep up with the heat um, that was needed in here to be able to drive comfortably. Even if you were at 10, 15, 20 below, there's, I mean, you were, you had to be bundled up for sure. Not that you shouldn't be in some way, shape or form bundled up, or at least have Arctic gear accessible in case you were to break down. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to have to wear my parka in here, uh, if I got a heater, right? So, um, I'm really glad that they came up with that solution. That's super, super cool. Um, still got the Wabasto heater. Um, you can see it back there. Same spot. Um, don't know how it works. Haven't tested it yet. I just got this thing yesterday. We picked it up from the shipping company. So um, I've driven it around a bit. Uh, I don't have any debris in my roll bars uh, that I've noticed yet. So I don't hear this annoying sound every time I go up or down an incline or decline. I actually have all my oh shit handles for the passengers in the back, unlike my last one. Um, a much cleaner install on my air conditioner unit than my last one. So the one of the biggest things I've realized I've came to realize is I don't believe that my first Sherp that I made the video based off of was PDI'd, right? Where the dealer gets the unit from the manufacturer and then the dealer goes through it and makes sure that everything is the way that it should be. Um, I don't believe that that happened. I believe Sherp allowed them to send it directly to me without any of that having been done. 
and consequently I got a a really uh, subpar unit to what to again what somebody should expect when they're spending that kind of money. Um, price wise, I bought that one for a hundred and thirty seven thousand. I, be I believe it was 137,000. Um, this one outfitted the same way uh, with, well, the same way with a few exceptions, right? These fans weren't, uh, I didn't have that on the last one. That heater I didn't have on the last one. Those are both um, ads. Uh, those, um, this unit, the way it is right now, it has every option except I think one was 152,000. So, Pretty big uh, bump in price, um, but, uh, you know, it's somewhat to be expected. Um, I was a little bit bummed out. The key, the keys that I got don't work any of the locks. The, the locks are kind of like garbage on here. So you can't, like the locking the mechanism that for the front door and the back door are like super, super chintzy locks. And so the keys that I got don't work them. Um, so they're going to have to remedy that some way, shape, or form. Send me a whole bunch of keys, and I guess I'll figure out which ones work and which ones don't work. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, I did have them add some cool stuff here, though. They want me to check up here real quick. Um, oh, what's this? Oh, look at this. Holy cow. An actual manual. Didn't have that in the last one. Operator's manual. That's super cool. I didn't get I did not get one of these, if you can believe that. I did not get one of these with the last one that I bought. So I'm excited to see that I've got at least something so I don't have to blow somebody's phone up every time I need to try to do something to this thing. Uh, so I asked Josh at Sherp USA if he could fix a situation that I was having with my last Sherp where, um, you might be able to see it. Um, the batteries, so they, they put the fuse, I don't know, it might be hard to see, but there's some black boxes right there. And, um, they're sitting on top of the batteries. So you, can, you can't hardly even see the battery posts, like the terminals. You literally can't even, like, if, if you had to jumpstart this thing, it, it would be like a no-go. So I had Josh um, hook me up with an Anderson connector right here um, that is already wired to the batteries. And then in the back, he made me a, like, I think it's like a 25-foot set of arctic grade leads have an anderson connector on one end and the the uh, positive negative uh, clamp on the other end and you're good to go so a little a minor uh a mi pretty minor um thing but you know josh was still able to do it and and make it happen which was which was pretty awesome because you know we, we ran into an issue i think my last one had a draw or something in it and it, uh, so it was, we did have to jump start it once or twice. And what a nightmare. I just, I can't stress that enough. Um, but, oh God, this, that just bothers the shit out of me. Um, anyhow, moving on. Um, the other thing I would like to see them do, and I, what I'm probably going to do, is this is super, super chintzy steel. Like this steel is like, it's, it's really bad steel. Like, um, yeah. So I'm going to, I think, I don't know if I'll, I'll probably be able to do, drill these out. Um, pull this whole front off, unbolt it here, break this and drill all those out and rebuild this whole thing out of some like American steel. Because I don't know what kind of steel they got in Ukraine or Russia or wherever the hell they're getting their steel. But it is garbage. So, unfortunately, the whole entire frame is probably made out of the same steel. But 
Um, I'm not gonna go that. Uh, I'm not gonna go that nuts with it. So there was something else back here I wanted to show you guys. Um, I had made uh, a video on my last Sherp about these. Um, on the last one, they were super, super chintzy. There was just a bunch of stuff that was chintzy on the last one. So um, they they upgraded these. Again, I'm almost positive this is a Sherp USA thing and not a Sherp corporate thing or Argo for that matter. Um, this is why I'm saying if you're going to buy a Sherp, buy it through Sherp USA. Like it's almost not even a... Um, it, it's, it, it needs to just be like a mandatory thing. Like just buy it through them because it's, it's such a big, so much difference dealing with them and their, their customer service and everything, uh, than it was my first go around. I mean, when my first one was breaking down all the time and everything was going on with it, um, I didn't even buy it from them. And Josh actually reached out to me and was like, Hey, I'm sorry you're having a, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you're having issues with your Sherp. Um, you know, let me, let me try to see if I can, um, help and help is an understatement. Um, I mean, he had technicians on the phone with me, um, walking me through stuff, sending me videos, like how to videos, like, Hey, I need to, I need to do this, but I don't have an owner's manual. And so he would like have one of his mechanics go to a Sherp just like mine and film the entire thing on how to do whatever I needed to do. And then they would send me that video and um, never got an invoice for any of that stuff. You know, so that kind of customer service is just super hard to super hard to come by. Um, so I, I wanted to give him a I wanted to give him a shout out and make sure he knew how, how much we uh, how much we appreciated him for sure because that was a it was a really really bad experience the first go around but I'm glad that I decided to go get another one um, because I like I said I get to see the changes that they made and and the uh, and it's also fun to know that I my video played a a I don't want to say a pretty big part but. I'm, I'm going to a, a big part in why some of those changes happened. So that's the whole reason for the video. It wasn't like I uh, expected Sherp to go out of business, right? So it was just that, hey man, if you're taking our money. You've got to up your standards, right? You, if you're going to take our money for a product, um, you need to be held, held to a certain standard. And I did not personally feel that, that they were. And so I made a video about it and a lot of you agreed with me and, and then there were some idiots out there. Moving on. Um, there is this tub under here um, that in the last one was like the chintziest little like Rubbermaid tote. It literally looked like they bought this Rubbermaid tote from like Walmart before they sent it to me and uh, cut the lid off, cut like the whole lid off of it and then shoved it down in there. So not super impressed. This one, however, is, uh, appears to be awesome. Um, I haven't had that up yet, but oh yeah, this one is like designed to be in here. So um, it, lots more storage. There's no way you're going to get my last one. I would get water and stuff in there and all of my stuff would be like completely saturated. So, um, this is super cool to see this tote in here. Um, those are the jumper cable leads I was telling you guys about. And then I also had him put, uh, or I didn't have him, but I was asking him about this. Uh, when I bought my last shirt, me and Josh worked together quite a bit on some of the things that I would like to see changed. Um, and one of them was this Arctic, these Arctic covers over these, over the side vents to kind of restrict airflow so that you're not, um, sucking in all that cold air and cooling that engine off so fast. So you can actually kind of 
restrict airflow uh, with these, which will which will work great. I'm sure it'll work great. Um, the one change that I am going to make almost immediately um, is I'm going to take these bolts out and just put pins in there. Um, it's or like a cotter, you know, a cotter pin or some kind of uh, some kind of latch like that. Um, so that this is easily accessible. If you've got something big that needs to go down in there, like for instance, your winch that they give you on a receiver plate. Um, you know, if you put your winch in there, uh, trying to wrestle that big bastard out um, in between those bars would get a little old. So just pulling these floorboards up and popping four pins or two, or one, two pins, really, you only need to take out one bar. Um, it would just make it nice to be able to have unrestricted access to whatever you're storing in your cargo area down there. Um, but that's pretty, that's pretty, uh, pretty minor for sure. So, um, I feel like the quilting or the, the padding in here is a little bit higher quality. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, I was definitely, um, not impressed with the last, um, stuff that was in here and to be quite honest with you i'm still not impressed with it um it's still just double-sided sticky taped or not sticky tape but double-sided velcro uh on here um i mean they make waterproof rivets uh i would think that especially in an area like that where it's up high um you know, putting a rivet in like that, you're not really going to see um, or be susceptible to like underwater and now you're taking on water like crazy. And I mean, again, pretty minor, but um, I wasn't super thrilled about this. I don't know necessarily know how they could have done it better, but um, it did strike me as a little bit chintzy too. Um, but uh, they just kind of duct taped down the wire um, for this for this light. I feel like that's a pretty clean install for those side lights. Like as far as how they made the uh, how they put it through the wall, um, and then they put that kit or that um, uh, this pan this panel on the inside. Um, so I feel like that's a pretty uh, clean install. Um, I'm not a big, like, you know, wiring guy or whatever. I don't know, uh, the best way to, um, say that, but I feel like there was probably a better way to have, have done that than, than duct tape wires down on top there. But, you know, ultimately they're covered and um, everything will probably be fine. Um... Oh, the one thing I'm really bummed out. This is like the only thing that I, I liked more on my last Sherp than I do this one. So back here on the old one, I don't know if in the other videos you could see it or not. But back here, there was a cover and it went over this and... It was like waterproof. I mean, it was like a nice latch, everything. It was it was really, really nice. And it made it great for, like I would always store just like, uh, I'd, I'd pack the one side full of MREs and then, or, or like mountain houses or whatever. Uh, and then the other side, I just packed full of water. So then I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, I'm out somewhere, I break down, I need a couple of days worth of food or whatever. I've got it here and it's not really taking up any storage that I would use for anything else, like, or that's critical for anything else. So, um, that was really nice. And they've like, it's, they didn't necessarily like do away with it, but it's definitely not anything like the last one. So now it's just like this, it's under here and, uh, it's like super chintzy. It's not waterproof or at all. Um, and it just like, you know, I could still do the same thing. I don't necessarily know how like weather resistant or whatever, um, 
you know, that is down there. But uh, I'm, de I'm definitely still going to put stuff in there. Uh, it just, the last one was, was definitely a lot nicer. Oh, and I'm just missing a bolt. So that's strange. So that bolt, the jump seat fastens there, but, but I don't have a bolt there. So that's kind of unfortunate. Um, anyhow. Yeah. So again, pretty minimal, whatever, but, um, I had them throw, uh, or I bought these extra seats because these seats are so uncomfortable and I mean like you have to really hate somebody to have them ride back here like with these seats you 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 put your in-laws back here this is where your in-laws sit for sure so I bought these uh, I bought two of them I'm gonna take out these two front seats here and here and I'm gonna put bucket seats here and here and then when we do something where we're like leasing it or whatever, and we have to, you know, we need to be able to move more manpower. Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff with the forestry and those guys are a different breed, man. Those, they're, they're um, diehards. They're, they're putting up with shit that uh, you or I would, would never want to have to put up with. Um, and so riding back here with air conditioning actually is probably a step up from what they're used to. When you, when you watch those guys carrying those sacks around and the axes and all of the stuff that they're carrying to do their job. And, uh, and when you really figure out what they make per hour, um, uh, I'm really surprised that we have any wildfire guys <laughs> Um, so yeah, they, they definitely, uh, um, would probably think that this is, this isn't so bad, you know, being back here again, given what they're normally used to and what they're used to putting up with. So, um, but for convenience, like me and my family or me and my friends going out wolf hunting or whatever, I'll probably just put those two seats in a lot more comfortable looking forward. Um, I feel like there'll be a huge, uh, that'll be a huge, uh, step forward. So, um, I'll probably make another review video when, um, uh, I get it out and I'm, and I'm running it. Uh, I haven't done that yet on this one. Um, like I said, I, I just got it, um, not last week or not last week, yesterday I picked it up. So, um, I haven't had time to really take it out. Uh, I got it. It's got 12 hours on it, which Sherp USA puts on it, uh, a portion of them, I should say, for testing and making sure that everything's good. Um, so that's cool. I'm glad that they do that. Happy to see the 12 hours on there so that I at least know that everything's working. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I will, uh, like I said, I'll make another video. This is way more stiff uh, than the last one was. Still moves. I still think there should be a latch that this can latch on the inside. I think that would be like a super easy feature. Don't know why it's not on there. Um, I will probably put it on mine, but all in all, totally in love with the black sure over the white one i think the the white one uh not not in love with at all so compared to this one um we're gonna have the front rack and all that stuff built for it a roof rack the ladder going down the back we're gonna do all that stuff again on this one so when i get all that built i'll um i'll upload that video and um show you how it was built and stuff in case you guys have one and you want to, uh, build it, you know, build it yourself or have it built or whatever you're wanting to do. So, all right, guys. Well, like I said, they got me again or they didn't get me. They didn't get me again. I shouldn't say that they, um, um, the machine, I've always said this in every video, the machine itself is phenomenal. The, 
what its capabilities were. I'll never take that away from them. Um, the only reason I bought another one was because of Josh uh, at, at Sherp USA and their crew over there, the mechanics that would call me, you know, when we were broke down, you know, 15 miles back in the middle of nowhere, overnighting me parts, you know, just all of their support for a unit that they didn't even sell me was pretty, uh, you know, it was a class act for sure. So uh, that's really the only reason I decided to buy another one. Um, that and I know I can put it to work and, and make my money back uh, on it, you know, but um, so we'll see how the experience goes with this one. And then uh, I'll keep you guys updated. So far, so good. Like I said, they made a lot of the changes. Like I just walked you guys through. They made a lot of changes that, that make sense. Um, should have probably been like that from the get-go when they first came out. Trial and error. They'll get through it. And uh, um, Josh coming out with some of his own stuff. I think he's even got some more stuff in the works uh, to try to make these things even better. But... Um, Anyhow, let me guys let me know if you guys have any questions in uh, about the Sherp, and and uh, I'll do my best to uh, uh, respond uh, and and with what you know with answers to whatever questions you guys have. I'll uh, I'll try to make sure that I'm diligent about that. I know I haven't posted a video in like a year, but we've had uh, we've had a lot going on. So, all right, guys, take care.